Good afternoon, Gary. Good afternoon. Congratulations on the brand new album. Thank you. How does it feel? Well, it's a bit, bit of a relief to have something out and I feel like uh, people might hear the Jayhawks name again. Mm-hmm, because it, it has been a bit of a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, as I say, with this album, um, any expectation? I think there's, um, just from fans um, all over the show, I think uh, certainly an international expectation um, with this album's release. Uh, I don't really have any expectations because I've been doing it long enough to know that uh, um, it's kind of fruitless to, to come to expect anything. You just do with the best you can. Mm. You can uh, keep your fingers in, in the... Uh, business side of it as much as you can to make sure that you're giving yourself a chance but uh, there's no guarantees uh, I think we're fairly realistic in that uh, we don't expect to uh, dethrone the Backstreet Boys <laughs> I think uh, you know one expectation is that we we want to uh, we want to uh, to available to our fans as much as possible wherever they are you know which means tour as much as we can, uh, more so than we have in quite a while. Mm. Um, I know there's talk of us going to Australia, and we're trying to talk the record company into having a stop in South Africa on the way. Mm. Mm. That would be mm. probably early next year Stunning. that happens. Mm. 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 Because, I mean, as I say, I mean, you know, 15 years you know, into your career, I mean, you were, you were doing, I mean, you've always done the style of music that you have, um, for it to now almost become a mainstream, uh, I mean, obviously a, a lot of younger bands have picked up on, on what you were doing and obviously tweaked it, um, I mean, in, in a lot of, you know, in, in a lot of senses, you, you broke a lot of ground, I think, you know, um, you know, in, in your area of music, you know, in, in sort of blending folk and country and then sort of getting it, you know, getting it out to the masses and have it translate. I mean, are you, is that something that you sort of aware of and, and sort of are, are happy to sort of shout about? Uh, I'm proud of what we've done. I'm proud of what we did from, uh, when you think about where, what was going on in 1985 when mm. we got together. Mm. Um, it was fairly, uh, unique um, and uh, you know I think we've been called uh, many things retro uh, um, in many ways we've been ahead of our time out of step might be a better term, you know, we're now now we've been we've done that uh, plan so long that we've kind of taken it into different areas um, and uh, and uh, who knows, uh, you know, that uh, we may still be a bit uh, out of step with uh, the rest mm. of the scene. Mm. Mm. Was that always the intention with the band, uh, to sort of offer something a little different and not sort of coach the mainstream? Well, I don't think we could really look ourselves in the mirror and feel like we were trying to do something that was popular. Mm. We came from a very fertile music scene in the... Uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, which probably had something to do with it, the fact that we had the best rock bands going, uh, what mm. I would think, mm. uh, still seminal bands, and Husker Du and Replacements, and mm. Soul Asylum, and um, a bunch of things like that. Um, we felt like we didn't want to just become another, you know, mm. copy, wannabe, uh, you know, Husker Du, so... Mm. Mm. That, that probably has something to do with uh, contributing to our uh, our searching for something a little different. Mm. And I mean, is is it? Mm, but is it refreshing to you to sort of be you know credited for you know for being a band that that say stuck to their guns and and didn't sort of you know sell out or you know make a, a seminal pop tune you know for the sake of doing it and have it become as popular as as it has but in its own right well uh yeah and i don't think there's anything wrong with the seminal pop tune but, uh, <laughs> okay i think that's a good thing mm. I, I mean i i guess i um i'm glad we've been able to do it our own way i don't have any kind of uh um, feeling of uh, 
Yeah, we're uh, outside the mainstream, and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we are huge. I mean, I don't think that's my. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not excited about being a cult band, but mm. I'm glad that we've been able to do something our own way. Mm. But almost to have it become, to have it become popular music, um, you know, almost it, is, the, is the definitive word there. <laughs> almost become popular music. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's all relative, isn't it? Sure. It's, it's, it's very popular. Um, I'm sorry, I'm doing two things. One thing not a problem. Make dishes, as you can hear. Yes. Mostly. Not a problem. Uh, this isn't a radio thing, is it? No, it's not. Okay, I want to make sure I wasn't uh, making too much noise. Um, uh, it, it feels good to do something our own way. It's, mm. it's, uh, it's hard because you feel a bit alone most of the time. And, mm. um, uh, certain people get it, certain people don't. Mm. People who get it are really uh, are loyal, though. Sure. Very loyal. Mm. And I think that's certainly, you know, part of your success is that um, the fans that you've coached from the beginning, um, you know, have have probably stayed with you and obviously coached, um, you know, the well to the audience that you have now. And it is very much, I think, the people um, that listen to the Jayhawks feel that um, will feel a part of what you're about. It's almost that they've stuck with you through you know, through thick and thin and always believed that what you were doing was was excellent material and it was just a question of time when, when everybody else would sort of wake up to the fact that there's, you know, the genius within. Well, I, I'm glad that we've been able to have people uh, stick with us. It's always a testament to your, to the depth of the music and the, mm. and the, uh, and the intelligence of your audience. Mm. Mm. Uh, we've been very happy about it. You don't want to have a bunch of people coming in and out, mm. liking you for a record and then moving on, you know. It's mm. uh, very fulfilling about that. Mm. 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 Now, this is this is the first album that um, that Columbia's doing, obviously, because of their deal that they've done with, um, with American, um, and obviously now owning that label. Um, does, does that mean, as I say, I mean, obviously with you going to, you know, intending to go to places like Australia, is, is that a place that you, you know, is that a place that you guys like to be at, at now? I mean, this is a, with, you know, with, with a fifth album that you would like to sort of um, play um, to, you know, to the rest of the world and take it outside of America and, um, and to new territories? Well, we've wanted to do that for a long time. We, were, we had a, our work... Uh, papers for Australia years ago, and uh, the tour got cancelled. Uh, I believe we were going to uh, be the warm-up band for the Count of Crows in 1995, okay. I believe, uh, when they were on their first record, and I think Adam developed a, a singing or throat, uh, his throat problem of some sort, and, and um, it's been our, on our agenda for a long time. Um, it always is somewhat uh, dependent on how how much interest there is in the country. So, sure. um, And to, uh, you know, certainly the record company wants you to go to the places where you have the most interest first. And then, um, so, so basically, we wanted to go for a long time to many different places. Uh, we have spent a lot of time in Europe, but mostly Western Europe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Jayhawks would like to... to mm -hmm. Uh, get out there as mm -hmm. much as possible. No, no different than before. It just seems like now we have uh, we have more ability to. The record company seems fired up. Um, mm -hmm. We have a uh, uh, on the last record. You know, the record company was had problems. And, mm -hmm. uh, the record before that, Mark Olson quit about two thirds of the way through the tour. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the first time we've been set up to actually tour a, mm -hmm. a full full life of a record. Mm -hmm. if we want to. Because I mean, you, you, I mean, you, you're quoted as saying that this is a crucial record for you. What makes it so? I mean, what is you know what what makes it crucial? Well, I, again, I always uh, um, I always regret these bios. <laughs> they quote something uh, you just throw out, Journalists. and maybe it was just a day. Mm -hmm. uh, I truly believe that any record's a crucial record for you because nobody's guaranteed a. Uh, a lifetime in the music business making records. We've been lucky to do it for a long time. Mm. But, uh, you know, we're, uh, we we can't expect to be given a, uh, an opportunity to make a record uh, 
with a company like this uh, mm -hmm. all the time. You know, this mm -hmm. is, uh, and I think the main thing is we haven't been around for a while. So when I think we said crucial, I guess we meant like, well, um, we have a lot of work to do to, to even to get the attention of our old fans. Mm -hmm. so, um, get some new ones. Mm -hmm. And when, when you look at Smile, what would you say is, I mean, um, what is the single biggest attraction to you when you look at the album um, and sort of go, well, the reason why you know, people should be listening to this album and the reason why it actually um, has a place is because of what? The songwriting mainly. Mm -hmm. I mean, the songwriting is strong and uh, I don't... I don't hear a lot of, I don't hear anybody else writing songs like we do. I think we're just a unique band, and we write songs in maybe uh, the classic way. Um, um, there are a lot of people I really respect, uh, somebody like Moby, who's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I consider him a great songwriter, but mm -hmm. he's, uh, it's almost uh, linear amount of song music sometimes, or, or sampling and mixing. But as far as just a pure songwriter, Songwriting, I, I'm very proud of the band, and, and uh, I don't think anybody sounds like us, sings mm. like us, sings like us and, mm. uh, and there's a depth to the music that mm. uh, um, is uh, gonna, that uh, is undeniable, I think. Because mm. we've um, um, live actually um, coming out on tour in South Africa in about two weeks' time, and I was speaking to Ed Kowalski last night, um, and also obviously with regards live, I mean, um, a different band, but um, songwriting also a very crucial area, um, and I think certainly um, a big part of, the, of their success comes through in the fact that, you know, there's wall-to-wall -wall tri trivial sort of nonsense on the radio, um, but very few truly credible songwriters out there that are um, are releasing commercial albums that actually matter, you know, without sort of selling out and uh, or, you know, writing sort of trivial trivial pop tunes. There's there's certainly, you know, three potentially four dimensions happening across what the Jayhawks are doing and, you know, that probably applies to live in a, in a lot of respects. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like, I respect that band. I know Ed and uh, I call him Ned. Um, <laughs> any reason? Any reason why? Huh? Any reason why you call him Ned? Because I met him uh, in Holland and called him Ned by mistake. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a little joke. Okay. We're, uh, comparing eyewear okay. at the time. Uh, he's a good guy though, um, and I think their band is good. I think what you said is interesting. Um, that we are attempting to put out credible music with depth on, in a commercial arena mm. and. Uh, I think it's easy to go and say, well, I'm just going to make some little record and uh, mm -hmm. sell it myself. And, you know, we're going to be um, the kings of our hometown. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I like to reach, I'd like to make more of an impact and help, uh, you know, it's almost uh, a goodwill mm -hmm. project. You know, try to help radio change because mm -hmm. it used to be good. And, and young people can are smart and they can be uh, given interesting music and they can like it and uh and that feeds off itself what's mm -hmm. happening now is they're being, being given a diet of, of music that uh they're starting to get used to and i don't want them to mm -hmm. because i mean i think everyone is always quick to and i mean i think musicians as well always quick to point a finger and say well the state of music is so bad and you know um if only things were different but that, uh, as you say the only way that you're going to do that is if you actually use that platform to, to, to help educate you know, the, the listeners out there into what is actually, you know, what, what makes for it a truly good band, that it's, it's not just a one-dimensional thing. Well, when I think of what people listen to on the radio in the 60s and 70s, it was, uh, there was some bad stuff, but there was some really good stuff, mm -hmm. and 18-year-old uh, kids, 16-year-old kids were able to listen to it and dig it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think kids are any dumber now, so I think it's just really... I equate the period now to uh, early 60s in, in music when the airwaves were dominated by Fabian and uh, mm -hmm. Bobby Rydell and uh, Frankie Avalon and a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, there's something like the Beatles needs to hit the radio waves to shake people up and say, hey, I'm not going to listen to this drivel. Mm -hmm. I mean, was, was, was that one of the reasons why you sort of pulled Bob Ezrin in, that he could perhaps capture, help capture that, 
that for you? Well, not not really. I mean, the reason we use Bob is because he uh, his his resume just showed me that he, uh, he was just. Uh, we knew we were going to get an interesting record, mm. no matter what happened. Uh, he was going to take us on, on, on some somewhere that we hadn't been before, mm. um, and we that's what we wanted to do at this time. We wanted to. We didn't want to go through the motions and just try to make a record that uh, we could do in our sleep. Mm, mm, and, mm. And, uh, and Bob was uh, the one producer who responded uh, to our tape with a very detailed uh, letter. Um, mm. uh, uh, song by song he went through and uh, discussed it. Uh, and he was passionate about it, so mm. we, we liked the passion. Mm, 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 mm. Because um, I mean, you, you made reference to to Moby earlier, and it's uh, actually quite interesting because I mean that was an album that came out last year, and I think probably got got lost in in you know in the amount of material that was being released around about that time. But um, I think the sign of any any album is that if it's worth its salt, it's going to I think like all your albums have, and that's what sort of gives you that sort of classic edge is that um, if it's good enough, um, it might not get to number one on the Billboard charts, but it's certainly going to, to irritate you know, the top 50, you know, not for a month or two months, but you know, probably indefinitely if, if it can. But that's, that's the sign that uh, you know, you, people will tire of, you know, of, of the boring stuff or the one-dimensional stuff, and the good stuff eventually wins the day. What's the uh, what's the other good Moby stuff to get? Because all I have is the play record. Yes, I think everybody has that one. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know there's other ones that. Uh, there were two others, yeah. I suppose any of them are probably interesting. Mm, 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 mm. But I mean, say so in in his case, that album came out, did a bit of business, and then sort of moved away. But then it didn't disappear altogether, and then it sort of now all of a sudden has become a really big commercial um, album. But um, if it wasn't, say, if it wasn't as good as it as it is, um, it, it certainly would have disappeared. And I think the same with, with you know with your albums that um, that each and every one from the debut, um, those albums are still sort of out there. Are still, I mean, as catalog items tick through month on month, you know, people are still picking up these albums and getting into it. So they are all still relevant. You know, in in the nulls, they're still relevant, which I think must be a credit to to your songwriting. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Now, <laughs> um, you've um, the, the album's been out um, in the states. Um, well, just what for about a month now, just under a month. Uh, two weeks. Okay, okay. And and the response from uh, from America has it has it been has it been good? Uh. Yes, I think so. It's kind of uh, well, we haven't really toured much, so we're we're going out next Thursday. We're starting. Mm. Um, as far as the response from you know uh, people in the audience, uh, it's still early to tell. But the record um, it's going fine, mm. it's going well. Mm. It's uh, it's, it's uh, we're pleased with it so far. Mm. Uh, what it needs to do is to continue on mm. Mm. and, and be. Uh, heard on the radio as much as possible, which it seems to be going in that direction. Mm. We'll see. Mm. We're, we're, we're cautiously optimistic uh, mm. about its, its uh, success, but um, mm. we know that we made a good record, So, uh, and I know that uh, I get excited to think there are people maybe at this point putting it on for the first time. Mm. It's exciting for me mm. to think about. Because mm -hmm. I think it, it certainly sounds, I mean, with uh, you know, with the place that you're in now, you as a as a collective, as a band, um, certainly in a you know in a, in a very good place, still very well, sort of enjoying enjoying what you're doing as a band. Well, we never um, burn ourselves out like a lot of bands. That's part part of the reason we're still together. Um, and we didn't really tour much until 1992. The first seven years of our band's existence was really. Uh, you know, we all worked jobs, and we put out a couple records, and we toured a bit. Uh, but we didn't tour a lot, so we had a, uh, a record out on a major label in 92. And then uh, in 95, we 
Olsen left, and so we shortened our tour. And then uh, at Sound of Lies, we only toured a couple months uh, uh-huh. because of the re- record company's problems. So, you know, in reality, this band has only toured, you know, four uh-huh. or five years, uh-huh. solid years, I think. And so it's still somewhat new to us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so there's certainly no ceiling on 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 where it um, where it's going to go, which is, is 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 quite 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 a nice place to be as well. Uh, as far as what the record success or the band? well uh, the band. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, that's. I think that was the goal we had um, in the last couple of records was to get to a point where. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt. You have another interview. Okay. I'm okay. I'll up. finish this question. I was just going to say it's nice to be able to say this band is the Jayhawks and and they can do a lot of um, different things and uh, you don't know what to expect but you know that it's going to be interesting well Gary thank you so much for your time okay and uh, all the best where in South Africa where are you calling from Um, I'm in Cape Town Cape Town okay there we go next time you watch CNN you can can, can see where it is (laughs) okay (laughs) thanks very very much alright bye have a good weekend bye bye